friends. My name is Angela Hessick and I am not a professional dog groomer. I am just a typical ordinary citizen who absolutely loves their dogs like they're their babies. And during the pandemic or even during economic times or even if you just have plenty of time on your hands, it is really nice to know how to groom your dog at home without worrying about hurting it and getting it used to doing this so that when it does go to the groomer now and then, um, it's not gonna give the groomer a hard time. This is Button. <laughs> She's a two-year-old Cavachon, which is uh, my all-time favorite breed. It's a hybrid of a King Charles Cavalier Spaniel and a Bichon Frise. Um, I also have another one, <laughs> Peanut, which you will see periodically me kicking the ball because she thinks anytime I'm working, it's time for her to be helping me that way. So, um, welcome to my yard and I hope that this is beneficial to you. Again, I am not a professional, but I've been doing this maybe 30 years now. Since I was young, I would do our dogs. So, I just know how it works for me. And if there are things that you see that you don't like or you don't think it would work for you, don't do it. Um, just, it's, it's a matter of uh, just practice. Like anything else, you just practice and you get better. I've gotten a few tips from my groomer because I do take them now and then. Um, I don't express their scent glands. Um, sometimes I have a difficult time getting their toenails trimmed or needing their ears cleaned and they just won't cooperate. So in those instances, I take them to my groomer, but at home, just for now, to keep the matting down, this is what we do. Um, I brush them. I'd like to say every night, but it's probably not. It's probably every two or three nights a week I brush them. Um, at this point, this one here is, is starting to get mats, and I know then that I can't wait anymore. I've got to do it. Um, I did start to trim her her back and then I realized that it might help some people if I did a video so um, she is shorter up here but I'm gonna be clipping her even shorter than that today and it's been a couple weeks so there should be something you see coming off good peanuts being good <laughs> I also have dogs on the neighbor's side and sometimes they start barking if you see me cut tape that's why I'm gonna be trying to get the the barking to stop Anyway, um, I have a couple tips right off the bat that if your baby, can you sit please? You're such a good girl. You're such a good girl. Um, make it a fun experience for your little one. You don't want them to be afraid of it. You don't want to push them further than they're willing to go or do it for so long that they get tired and, and you're both frustrated. When you get to a point like that, just let them down. Brush them off real quick so you get all the fluff off and just let them down and do their thing. Uh, give them about 10 minutes and they'll be ready to try again. Um, to begin with, something that's super important, and this one is old and chewed up because when she was a puppy she ate it. Um, this is to get mats out and it's really an important tool. It looks kind of scary but it's not um, it's not super sharp, but it does have some serrating on it and she does have some mats back here So I'll show you how it works You just kind of scoop into there and then gently keep this don't put tension on the comb but pull pull from the dog's side So that you're not pulling on their skin um, You're releasing the tension by holding it with your fingers and then you can kind of just wiggle this one back and forth just so that serrating, that serrated edge is, is doing its job. And you just keep working until voila, no more mat. Um, I could do this probably all day because she sits on her rump and that's where it's started to mat. She doesn't like it, but she puts up with it. She knows it helps her. Where are you going? Um, when I first started doing her, because she was a serious scary cat of everything, 
uh, she wouldn't do with the clippers. She wouldn't have it. So I found this on Amazon. It's called Scaredy Cut. <laughs> and um, just like my clipper set, it has a set, can you get this off here? It has a set of guides that are different sizes so that you can make your baby's fur as long as you want it. Um, it just, you just slide it in like that and it clips on and then you can go through and mind you, it does not work as well as clippers, but in a pinch, they work great for a dog that, that needs to be trained and learn how to do this. Um, you just put it in there and they're not the sharpest in the world. They um, probably could be a lot tighter. They only seem to cut right here in the corner, but uh, as many downfalls as it may have, it worked. It really worked in helping her become familiar with the, the, um, with the guide, the, this pink part here, having it comb through her um, and just having me mess with her. And as you can see, I know you can see it does work. You have to kind of grab chunks, put it through, and then hold it while you clip it. Here's the bird. <laughs> um, I keep this handy for the hair so it's not blowing around the yard or in your house or wherever, bathroom, wherever it is that you choose to do this. I have done it everywhere. I happen to have a, um, a cape for when you cut someone's hair because I, I also cut my family's hair. And this thing works great to keep your clothes clean. It looks ridiculous, I know, but it's itchy. It's itchy and you don't want to go in the house if you're outside or sitting on the couch and getting it everywhere. You can literally sit on the couch and or in your recliner, pull your pup to you, get your clippers out or your scissors, sit them on your lap and cuddle them and not get things all messy. Um, it's really good to introduce your animal to the item before you just go touching it to them. That way they're ready. They're just a little prepared. It's like saying, hey, are you ready? Let's go. Um, to begin with, a groomer friend of mine told me that she goes in the downward motion. I don't know if that's something all professionals do, but it does help to begin with. It helps to just get that the majority of the extra hair, the excess hair off. I, however, have found that after I do that, I need to go back over my babies in the opposite direction because of their curls. Um, their curls are real, really wavy. I'm sorry, honey. It's almost like they have, um, oh, what is it called? A calic, like they have little calics over their entire body. So I go over it both forward and backwards. Um, I am, I've found a, one of those rotten little mats and I'm really hoping that I don't have to trim her even shorter but I opted for what is this a 12 millimeter or number four clipper today um, typically in the winter I use a six or I think that's 18 millimeter um, just so they're not as chilly and they look so cute and fluffy but I've gone for the four today. Spring is kind of coming. I know that most of the country, it's probably snowing and there's all sorts of stuff happening, but I am in Central California and it's a beautiful, it's in the 60s today. And um, we've been getting the 70s. So I feel comfortable with making it a little shorter for her. And we're in the house most of the time. The fireplace is still going. So, um, also, if you, if you do decide to keep your pup short, you might want to be sure that you have some little sweaters or jackets or something like that. So if you do go outdoors, they're not going to be uncomfortable. They're not going to be too cold. <laughs> Cabochon, as a breed, has a tendency to, to like to stay cuddly. They love to cuddle. They like to stay warm. They like to, they're a little bit prissy. Um, in that regard. 
However, you put a little jacket on them or a sweater and they will be out in the snow running around. They don't mind it a bit. Hi, honey. Did a kiss? Oh, you're so sweet. So, um, those are my basic tips for getting started. Um, I also have a pair of professional hairstyling scissors. My personal tools that I use, because I've done this for quite some time, um, I have the Wall Motion. Uh, it's a lithium battery operated rechargeable um, clipper that comes with several different um, guides or combs. They they stay on because they they don't snap like that like the like the scaredy cut. They don't snap on. They actually slide on. So if you hit a mat or something that you need to kind of work with, they're not going to pop off. Um, this thing, I can clip both of my dogs with one charge. And it usually takes me quite a long time because I, I stop and let them have some time and start back up again, but it's a, it takes me like a day. Um, again, not a professional here. Um, I have uh, for their eyes. A lot of people have questions about tear stains. And you can see here, she's, she's most cabochon have this issue. Um, most dogs have this issue, but they're really noticeable in white dogs and most cabochon are white or the majority, I should say. Poodles, things like that, Maltese. This particular set of scissors um, has a little guard on the top. They're not real pointy, they're blunted on the end. So it makes it a little bit less scary doing this around their eyes. And I just hold them still, kind of get their little eyebrows and lashes out of the way. And hold it straight up against them and get, just give it a cut. And they get used to this after a while. They're not wild about it. You want a second? Hold on. You're such a good girl. Much better right along the eye there. Much better. And I just, you know, it takes time. You don't want to be a, in a hurry doing any of this because you want them to be comfortable. You want to be comfortable and you want to be safe more than anything. So that's for just right next to their eye. Um, I do use my scissors when I'm doing their face to, um, to kind of keep the little puff, that little round teddy bear kind of look. Um, shoot, I didn't bring my other comb out. I'm gonna kind of give it a little cleaning here. Hold on, baby. Make sure it's kind of cleaned out. And I use my fingers. I just grab this and use my fingers as the guide. Pull, pull this all forward. Pull this fluff. I'm sorry. Pull this all forward and then use your finger right under their eye. So you're kind of covering where their tear stain would have been. And then I take all this fluff, use my fingers just like that, and cut it off. Then what you've got is this cute little, and you, I will work on this so it has a little more shape. But what you now have is all of this stuff that was getting in their eye and creating irritation is now no longer irritating and it creates a really cute look it just makes them have that cute little teddy bear face and i just kind of again put it between my fingers pull it through we well, gotta hold still and give it a cut So we're getting there, huh? Still got a little goo here. And you're gonna, you're gonna, this is all <laughs> trial and error. And you gotta work with your baby's patience. You gotta work your own patience. I still have, you can see a lot of, that I missed here. So I just, you just, oh, hold on honey. I wanna get her eyelashes. You gotta just kinda keep going back and working it until you get the shape that you want. So you can see 
She's going to be a cute little baby when we get all done here. I'm going to go ahead and give her a break and then I'll try part two of this where we'll actually start clipping. Come on, baby. Can you go potty? Oh, good girl.